Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Gardner, if the Amtrak police officers want to negotiate for bonuses in their contract, are they allowed to take that into the next uh, collective bargaining uh, negotiations? Absolutely, uh, Congressman right, Thank you very much. Um, I would just like to uh, get back to a conversation that you and I have had about efforts to decrease trip times. Uh, we talk a lot about speeds in, in, in the railroad industry. We probably don't focus enough on how we just get people faster to where they need to go. Uh, you recently raised speeds on the Chicago to St. Louis corridor uh, by 20 miles per hour to 110 uh, miles per hour. Why did it take so long to get to 110 miles per hour? Well, uh, thank you, Congressman, for the question. And uh, trip time is uh, very important, a key piece of what is uh, attractive about rails when we can be competitive with driving. Um, this was a program led by the Illinois uh, State DOT, uh, together with Union Pacific and funded by the FRA. So Amtrak was a, uh, a supporter, uh, but it's a, a state-led project. And it took a long time to uh, rebuild the railway, which is what was essentially necessary, and upgrade the signal system there uh, to handle 110 miles an hour service. Uh, it's, um, it's great that we've achieved it. and. Um, it's an important outcome, and it's going to be a big uh, game changer for service in Illinois. So back in the 1930s, we had a lot of trains in America going 100 miles an hour. This is a 10 mile per hour improvement over what we was fairly common in the 1930s. Uh, is there any plans to get Chicago to St. Louis to standard international high speed standards like 200 miles per hour? In other words, about twice as fast as trains are going on that quarter today? Well, currently, the, the plan is 110 miles an hour. To go above 110 miles an hour, you need to have a sealed corridor, a corridor in which all the grade crossings are eliminated, and there would need to be changes uh, probably in the alignment on uh, some of those routes. So those are, in certain corridors, those kind of investments, I think, are uh, appropriate. Um, what, I, what, what I think we've achieved here in Illinois, what Illinois has achieved, is to uh, really achieve the kind of standard level of inner city service we should be aiming for, 110 miles an hour service, which does allow trip time competitiveness. And where there's demand and opportunity, I think pursuing high speed does make sense on top of that base. I would just point out that regular old commuters just taking trains in and out of London have been going 125 miles per hour for a few decades now. So I just think we could set our sights a bit higher. Yep. With regards to trip time, uh, checking the Amtrak website, yesterday, it looks like the trip times haven't decreased despite the increase in speed. Uh, well, uh, currently, uh, we're in the production season of the major capital work that's occurring on the Northeast Corridor. So we've added some time to certain trains to reflect the fact that they're Very likely- specific to Chicago to St. Louis. Oh, in the, oh, in the Chicago, you... Chicago, St. Louis, uh, sort of the uh, schedule change will be has not yet taken place. So we're in testing of the new uh, speeds, but the upcoming schedule change will occur here soon. So uh, even though the trains are operating faster, the schedules remain at the current speeds until we have validated everything, and that'll happen soon. So there are a lot of places on the Northeast Quarter where we also have to straighten curves to, uh, to improve trip times and, and speeds. Uh, we've talked about this in the past. I sent a letter in August of 2022 uh, on this issue, have we made any improvements in, in trip times on the Northeast Quarter? We have a lot of work underway, uh, Congressman, to do that. These major capital programs that we've discussed are going to be the way that we uh, can change some of the trip time and the constraints. For instance, the Baltimore and Potomac Tunnel, as we'll uh, advance that program, we'll take a railroad that today is constrained to 30 miles an hour and make that 100 mile an hour alignment. Uh, as as uh, you know, a number of bridges also, as we replace them, will give us uh, faster speeds. And as we bundle with those improvements and upgrades to our infrastructure, we're looking to uh, shorten curves to create faster speeds as we also replace the overhead electric lines. So we put the new lines in the right alignment to maximize speed. Uh, our goal is to get um, 160 miles an hour everywhere we the, the railroad permits it today with the, the geometry and, uh, and upgrade the infrastructure to support that, both signal and power. Mr. Warren, when do you think we can actually see timetables improve on the Northeast Corridor? The Connect NEC plan that, that we are working on updating, we're very focused on improving trip time with projects within the existing right-of-way that you can do while you're doing basic state of good repair and modernization. You can straighten curves. You can replace signal systems. I, I just want to know, the, the next time I go to New York, it's faster than it is today. When is that going to happen? 
Unfortunately, it's going to take some time for these, you know, each of these about things. Are two years, five years? Here years and there. I couldn't give you an exact trip time, but it'll take a number of years for these to start to add up. When you get the three minutes from BMP tunnel, you get 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there. There's also studies that are going to be going on to look at new right-of-way where you can get significant trip time improvements. Mm -hmm. Those are I obviously longer-term projects. I'm out of time, but I just I think the American people want to see those returns so we can actually yep. say we invested billions of dollars here, and this is what we got. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.